as that working man, I can explain to you that the businesses that I have started, started from my hard work and determination, my service. When you start a new business, you can go and you can borrow money, or you can start that business based on supply and demand. Supply and demand is how I started my business. When I first started it, I couldn't even afford to get workers' compensation on workers because I didn't have workers at the time. I ran my business as myself. I didn't even know I was in a business because I was just in construction. So at that time, it was just service that was promoting my business. Service and determination. As a child, I grew up in Pennsylvania where I was born and raised till 15. From a child, we would go to Washington, D.C. to celebrate and be patriotic citizens with our parents. Well, on this one particular time when I was 10 years old, the reason we were there was for the pro-life march. Being Catholic, being Christians, we were very pro-life, and we would go on January 22nd to be a part of that, to help protest the constitutional amendment that legalized abortion in, in our country. One particular time when I was there, I met and had the opportunity to greet President Reagan. It was two days after he was inaugurated. He was walking across the street in front of me, and I called out, Mr. President, can I have your autograph? Three times later, I went under the velvet rope at 10. You'd think you can get away with those things. <laughs> Today, I'd be shot, <laughs> literally, probably. But uh, I went under the velvet rope, walked out in the middle of the street. Mr. President, can I have your autograph? Mr. President, can I have your autograph? He turns and he looks at me and he says, they tell me I don't have any time, I can just do one. He signs his name to my little piece of paper and walks on after shaking my mother's hand. That same determination at 10 years old is what I bring to the Capitol with your vote. That same service and integrity that I have used to run my business. And incidentally, I have brought my business to Lawton. We were down here in January helping out after the ice storm that devastated this region. I'm in construction. I run a tree company. I'm a tremendous conservative. Of course I have the same platform as my other opponents. Of course I'm for lower spending. Of course I'm for less government. But I believe we have to do it by balancing our budget the right way, and that's cutting spending. When we have the opportunity to build a new facility, let's look at the opportunity to restore what that one is there. How many of us have gone out and remodeled our homes instead of bulldozing it down and then building a new one? Sure, with, you're the, the very wealthy you can, but I think all of us drove our cars here. We didn't fly in a jet or come in our helicopter. I'm here for the working man, and that is you, ladies and gentlemen, the working man that runs Oklahoma. I'm a small hobby farmer. My pigs are out right now. <laughs> About three months ago, I traded nine baby Berkshires for two calves. I'm trying to get into cattle, I think. I didn't get a male, so something's wrong. <laughs> but uh, bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, tourism, sitting in the seat of the Senate and presiding over the Senate are the tasks of the lieutenant governor. Those are generally have been his or her's position. Well, in that seat of presiding over the state Senate, that seat has not been properly run since the 60s. The, the lieutenant governor has not sat in the seat of the Senate to preside over the sessions since the 60s. And that is recorded in the encyclopedia right now in Oklahoma, that it is not commonly held. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as your lieutenant governor, I will tell you that my determination and my integrity and my service will sit in that seat that I am hired for because that is what I do to represent the constituents. We have to have a lieutenant governor who is lit sitting in the sessions in the Senate, not just coming in in the event of a tie. That is not what you elected the official for. And also in tourism, I believe we have to do things to motivate people to come to Oklahoma. We have to encourage them to come to Oklahoma. By doing that, I believe that we should offer a tax incentive voucher to our guests. I have a television show that airs in 40 nations that I produced from, again, a truck with one door when I started my company. That television show is a reality entity of my company. It's an alter ego. Well, in that reality show, I've been to other countries to help promote it. And I can tell you that in one particular country, they give guests that come there their tax back. And you can apply back for your tax after you leave. Why can't we do that in Oklahoma? Why can't we encourage people to come here? And when they spend $100 or $1,000 or $20,000 on a family vacation down here hunting elk, why can they not get back at least a portion of their tax? Let's give them back 10% as an incentive. How many people that are strapped right now 
would say, you know what, I'm going to Oklahoma because they respect the fact that we need a little bit of our money back. Let's do that. Let's give them a tax voucher. Being a working man, I've fought the trial lawyers. I've fought the workers' compensation laws. Not to protest against them, but I have fought to abide by them because it's very difficult. I'm a small business. I'm a working man running for you. Rural America and corporate America and, or excuse me, rural America and corporate Oklahoma. Uh, because being the ear to the ground, we can have a representative who has his ear to the people. The lieutenant governor doesn't just sit in the seat of the Senate, but he also has the ear of the governor. He also has the ear of the people. My phone number, write this down, is 918-230-0005. And I guarantee you can call me day or night for your grievance or your problem. I'm accessible, and I know how it is to struggle through life. And that's the reason I've stepped into this race, because I believe we have to do things now. We are under attack from within. We have wolves in sheep's clothing who are running this country, who are acting like they are politicians, and they are nothing more than wolves. We have got to send a clear message to Washington, D.C. that Oklahoma stands free. And these things right now that our state sisters and that, and I mean Arizona, are under attack by the federal government for following laws of immigration, that is poppycock. He is getting away with anything he can to demise and destroy our nation. And I'm talking about Mr. Obama. He is a terrorist in this nation, and we have to call it like it is. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my first tasks will be to go and encourage our troops in the front line. I believe as a lieutenant governor, I believe as an elected official who never got to serve, my sister is, is here present with us. She just retired from the Army. But I had never had the opportunity to serve. My father was a World War II veteran, and he raised us to serve, but I never had the opportunity. But I believe that our leaders need to put themselves out in the front line to let our troops know that they are thought of, that they are cared about. They are our true patriots out there winning the war, but they have to know that they are not forgotten. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Nosak. A vote for me is a vote for the future. It's a vote for high energy, getting things done, determination, and a man who doesn't know how to take no for an answer. I'm a, not a politician, I'm a businessman. My wins are not intertwined in every other focus group, and I can breathe and flow freely in government. Thank you all very much. God bless you all. Thank you for having me. I hope someone has a question. Yes, sir. Uh, appreciate your time. Uh, because of old age, I was unable to understand your last name, please. No sack. N O S A K. I'm a Polish Italian, second generation American. Well, that works. Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you all. Thank you for being patient here.